So it's almost shocking to hear, I resent my children. Mm. That's a shocking statement from one parent to say. That ticks me off. That hurts. I guess until you know the whole circumstance, she wants to do something about it, but she resents her kids. And our hypnotist here, Sean Wheeler, legit hypnotist that can help you in a whole bunch of different areas with your shyness, weight gain. What else have you helped? Whatever the nervous habits are, you're talking about, you know, people who have nervous habits like pulling their hair out, people who, uh, you know, have real problems in their relationships with anger and their buttons being pushed by other people. You know, there's basically any kind of problem that has to do with how you're reacting to your life is something that I can help you with. Hannah needs some help here. Hey, Hannah, good morning. You're on The Voice Disguiser. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Even though I know it's, I don't look very good with this aspect. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, I'm going yeah. to try to protect you as much as I can here. But, man, when, when a, a mom says that she resents her kids, boy, that's a tough one to swallow initially. So what makes you have this resentment in you? Um, well, I think there are several things. Um, one thing is, um, I know it's going to sound terrible, but it's just how I feel as a single mom and how I perceive um, single mom, it's not something that I felt like I was signed up for. It's not something that I ever expected to happen. And um, um, when actually when he, when I was pregnant with, with my child, um, I really wanted to either um, marry his dad and become a family, work together, or give him up for adoption and us go our separate ways because I knew that I just didn't want to be a single mom. And he was not open to adoption, and because he's such a bad person, honestly, um, and I knew how unhappy I was living with him, I could not put a child through that by default, you know, because I couldn't give him to him, and he would not allow me to, you know, give him up for adoption. By default, I took on that role. Um, the other thing, though, is that um, prior to having my child, um, I had a miscarriage, and those pregnancies were so different for me because the first time I was excited, I felt strong, I felt like no matter what, me and this kid, we can take on the world. And I lost that baby and it like shattered me. And so later in my life, I was in a different place. I knew it wasn't the right time to have a baby, yet I, you know, but I did. I got pregnant and it just felt differently. I felt like I'm probably going to lose this one too. And even from when he was born, I thought, well, he made it here, but. There's SIDS, there's all these dangers in the world. And, you know, I really didn't think, I didn't trust that he was going to be here until he turned one. And I was like, okay, I think we've made it through, and now he's, he's here. So you purposely didn't form a connection because of what you had previously gone through? I think there's a, not on purpose, but I think subconsciously there was a fear to connect with him and then lose him and then hurt like that again. Hmm. And, and now it's like, and my thing is, I guess what really brought it to light for me, his his father lives out of state, and so he's with me for the school year, and he's with his dad for the summer. And towards the beginning of summer, I'm counting down to when he leaves to go to his dad's, like a kid counts down for Christmas. And at the end of summer, when he's coming home, I you know, I why don't like you let him back. stay with his dad then? Because I know he's a jerk, and I feel like he can keep it together long enough over the summer. Well, even if he's a jerk to you, maybe he's a really great dad. He, maybe he wants his kid. Oh, trust me. He, trust me. He has other children. He's had multiple relationships. He is not stable. He, um, he says he wants his kid, and I, but I know that once he had him, he'd be done. It would be like mission accomplished, and he'd be moving on to the next thing. Well, it almost sounds like it's. You, you think you're, that you're the best of two really bad worlds because you're saying you have resentment towards your child, but you're also saying that your ex isn't a great father either, but you're yeah. admitting that you're not a great mom. Right. Well, I, I think I'm a good mom to a degree. My thing is, I just, I feel like right now my son feels safe and loved by me, but I just know that when he gets older and there's more dynamic, like people say, you know, um, I just don't want, I just want him to always know and believe and think. I just want him to know that I'm in his corner no matter what. And because I know that's not always the truth in my heart, I want to change that so that when he's an adult 
and we're dealing with, with each other as adults, that is his truth. Explain to me this resentment you feel. So when he walks in the door, is it an agitation? Uh, try to try to paint a picture for me of what it, what it is. Um, just different things. I mean, his um, some things are worse than others, and he also um, he's he's generally you know a good kid, but he also has been diagnosed. Um, with ADHD, and so there are some behavioral problems. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. How old is your child? He's in elementary school. He's a kid. I know. He's your child. Yes. You chose to have him. Well, He's a blessing. But she knows that. That's why she's on with us. I know it. I know it rationally in my brain. My feelings don't always match up, and that's what okay, I'm exactly. Saying. And that that's oh. where that's where. Hi, Hannah. This is Sean Wheeler. Um, that's where this comes in. You know, the key is, is that you've got a sort of dissociation going on here because you uh, you logically know that you should feel differently about him, but you don't. And that means because when you look at your son, what part of you is thinking is uh, you're rep- you're using that as a representation of your lack of freedom. And you haven't yet accepted the fact that this is your responsibility um, in a way that would allow you to make the best of the situation. You know, oftentimes that's what happens. It causes frustration and misery is that, you know, the serenity prayer. You know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, all that kind of stuff. Well, Mm -hmm. everyone knows that, but very few people actually live by it. You know, one thing that she has to do is emotionally accept that this is the deal. This is what she signed up for. You know, she says she didn't sign up for it, but when you sleep with somebody and you have a child, you signed up for that responsibility. You have to accept it. And acceptance actually leads to serenity. Because once you accept it, you're not fighting it anymore. Now it becomes a question of, well, what's the best that I can possibly make of this situation? And people do amazing things when they're just able to do that. I'm glad you just interjected there because I'm, like, shaking. I'm so angry. You'll get your turn. I promise you that. Hey, Stacey, good morning. You're on The Burke Show. Hi. Hey, good morning. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, This really pisses me off, to be honest with you. Um, I'm a single mother. My child's father is... Nowhere to be found. Um, I didn't want this situation for myself either, but when you make the decision to have relations, to have a child, it's time for you to grow up and get some help if you have to. Take care of your kid. How can you look at your kid and, you know, be angry or want him to go to his dad's? I mean, that's a part of you. I don't understand. Like Jen, I am shaken. I am so mad at this situation. But isn't this essentially what she's doing? She's getting some help now. She, she's, she's identifying a problem. And here she is, and she's trying to get some help. So why are you so angry still, Jen? It's just, it's pretty unfathomable to me that a woman could look at her own child in that way. Well, you know, a lot of these things, you know, having had a couple thousand clients, one of the first things I had to learn was how to actually understand or see things from that person's perspective. Right. You're right. And, and no matter how strange it seems in that person's world, it makes sense to think about things in that particular way. So I start from a place of empathy. And then my, my feeling is, okay, she this is how she feels. This is how she sees things. Now how do we get her to see things in the way that she wants to or in a way that would produce a better result? Do you feel like your child picks up on your resentment or your dislike at all? No, I, 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 I don't think that is the case now. I just know as he gets older, I believe, you know, he will. And so that's why I want to stop it in its tracks now, reframe how I think about motherhood, reframe how I think about him reframe how I think about, you know, my life so that it doesn't create a problem for him in the future. Is this the first time you've reached out for help? Have you tried seeking help before? Um, I have, I've been to therapy for some other issues, um, for some other things, you know, and I, and I've sought help with him for ADHD, but as far as this aspect, I don't mm-hmm. think, honestly, I don't think I realized how bad it was until this week. Um, my mother said to me, are you ready for him to come home? And I said, no. And I looked at her and said, are you ready for him to come home? And she said, and she just, she looked exhausted and just sighed. And I said, and she, um, I said, you're not either. And she said, well, you're his mom. I said, well, you're his grandmother. And it just made me so sad for him that here this child has been away from his home for three months and nobody's looking forward to him coming home. Oh, breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. I, I can empathize with you on just one level here is that I told these guys I initially went to therapy also because I wasn't feeling connected enough to my kids and my wife. And it was something that I was learned. It was learned by my my parents. That's the, 
that yeah. was my, oh, yeah. those were my role models, yeah. you know? So I had to go and reprogram myself. I, I didn't have the same kind of resentment you did. I just wasn't accepting that I wasn't as loving or intimate with my kid as I think I should have been. And that's what well, got me into therapy. Yours is just way more extreme. Well, see, and here's the other thing, too. And it's, and you know, because I know nobody lives in a vacuum. There's all kinds of things that complicate all kinds of things. But I do feel it's generational as well um, because I am the youngest of my parents' children. And all the other ones were planned, and I was not. And I have always felt like I was the least favored by by my mom. I feel like for my dad, he was able to transition his thinking from me to an accident to a surprise, and I've always felt like I was an accident for her. Here's Michelle. Good morning, Michelle. You're on The Burt Show. Hi. Hi. Um, I just have a comment for the women who are in Jen, and I usually side with Jen on everything. But um, I'm a single mom of three, one with special needs. Um, their dad has been gone for about eight years. He doesn't even care if they're, like, eating or breathing. He doesn't even know. Um so when you have to be both to those children and, or, you know, I can imagine, I have three, okay? One would probably be a lot easier. But when you have to be both parents and you have to be there for all events, when you have to buy the school clothes, when you have to do everything, sometimes that resentment, you can't help it. It's just a feeling. And then you get followed with the immediate feeling of guilt, like, oh, I shouldn't feel that way. But sometimes you just want to sit down and, you know, you just want to buy something for yourself or you just want to go somewhere. And that's what she's, I think she's talking about. I don't think she's saying she resents her child. I, I'm just, I'm kind of furious at the people who can throw that out there. About how can you not, she's not saying she doesn't love her child. She's saying that, you know, sometimes you just, you, you have that, oh, my God, I wish I just had, you know, a little bit of freedom. That's all. Michelle, Is that do you what think- you're saying? Because I heard something very different. Okay, what did you hear? I didn't. Hear, I heard her say she resented her child. I didn't hear a frazzled mom. I heard somebody that's having serious resentment towards her kid and almost wishing she never had him. It sounds to me like she resents not her child but her state in life. The mm-hmm. fact that she doesn't have any freedom. And let's not forget, you know, there are guys who are responsible for all of these callers in this woman's situation. These guys accept no responsibility yeah. or very little. They're not in the picture. We're here criticizing this woman because the guy's not even around enough to give her time to go out and shop for herself and do things by herself. And that's what a married couple and that's what a, a couple is supposed to do for each other. Let each other have a little breathing room. She's got none of that when he's there. Is it a displaced resentment, Sean? Like she really resents her ex and what a jerk he is, and she's displacing that on her kid? Well, yeah, the kid is the signal. Like when he comes into town, she loses freedom. So when she looks at him, she sees him as that loss of freedom. He's gone for the summer, and she gets to go and do what she wants to do. She experiences that freedom. She she thinks about him. All of a sudden, here it comes back. Now I've got no freedom again. That's what he's representing for her. So she's saying that she loves her child. She's calling us because she wants to change how she feels about him. But that's what he's symbolizing for her in many respects now. So you think that if Anna comes in, sits down with you a couple of times, you might be able to change her mindset? Yeah, I think so. She's this is already an important coming, one she's, right here. Yeah, she's already coming from the right place. She said the word reframe, and reframe is a big-time therapy term. She probably has heard that from her therapist before. Ther- reframing means just looking at something and feeling a different way about it or putting a different frame around a situation, and I can help her to do that. Hey, Hannah, um, we're going to set you up with an appointment with Sean um, at 7.30 this morning, which was an hour ago. Because <laughs> you need it. <laughs> uh, let me put you on hold, and we'll get you uh, together with um, Sean here. And we'll talk to you again in a couple of days or a couple of weeks and see if things are getting any better for you. But, yes, you absolutely need help. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you. I, I really do appreciate it. All right, hold on.